Grant Stone was founded in 2016, so many pairs of their boots are coming up to being eight years old. I was late to the Grant Stone party. These are only three years old, but I thought it was timely to see how they're going. How are you going? Welcome back to my Bootlosophy channel, and if you're new, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and waters that I record on, the Wajik people. I've owned these Grantstone diesel boots for three years now. Uh, they were number 31 in my boot collection, and at the time, uh, one of my more expensive boots bought new, uh, because I'd been buying most of my collection at the time from eBay. If you've been uh, living under a rock, you won't have heard that Grant Stone was founded in 2016 by Wyatt Gilmore and Josh Lang, based in uh, Michigan in the United States of America, and uh, making their boots in a factory that Wyatt had worked in previously in Xiamen in China. If you go check out my initial review of these boots up here, uh, you get a full breakdown of the brand. Now, I've owned them for three years. I admit that with my large rotation, there is no way I've given these a normal person's three years worth of wear. In the early days of my collection, I did have a regular and manageable rotation. But as the years went on and my collection grew, especially in the last year and a half, <laughs> the rotation has been less than frequent amongst 110 odd boots. So without boring you about how I worked out how often I've worn these, I really should keep a log. <laughs> I think I've worn them about 600 kilometers or about 370 plus miles. Now, that's not a lot, I know, but at least if that's how much uh, you might wear them in a year, rotating say three or four pairs of boots, you can gauge for yourself how your boots will go in one year, say, uh, rather than my three. The Diesel is one of Grant Stone's collection of designs and is uh, one of two plain toe service boot designs made by them next to their Edward boot. Uh, built on the Leo last, that um, foot-shaped mold against which the leather is pulled and shaped to create the look of the boot. Uh, built on the Leo last, it embodies a lot of comfort in the shape of the uh, narrow heel and waist and roomy forefoot while remaining sleek and fashionable. Wyatt Gilmore's family has a long association with Alden and the Alden focus of design and comfort was a major factor in their design of the last and this, this boot. It is a dressy service boot. Six inches tall at the shaft, uh, low uh, profile sole, uh, although they do have makeups with the commander sole, and they put it on a low block heel. The large brass hardware, four eyelets, three speed hooks, accommodate both the leather laces and the flat cotton laces that also come with the boot. The distinctive design choice is in the two piece backstay, uh, incorporating a heel counter cover and a curved backstay uh, up the back. Now, in the full review that I mentioned earlier, I go into full detail about the construction. Basically, it's a 360 degree uh, Goodyear welt construction, meaning the leather welt connects the uppers to the sole and in this way, it makes the boot uh, water resistant. There are no stitch holes going all the way through from uh, the outside to the inside, for example. Uh, one stitch is on the inside of the boot only and one stitch is on the outside of the boot only. Good your belt construction also means that you can resole this boot when your sole wears out. Um, I do have a couple of updates on the construction for you though. Firstly, while the midsole is leather and cork filled and the footbed is also leather, um, footbed is often referred to as the insole, they do use a cardboard liner between the leather uh, footbed insole and the cork leather midsole. Beto's Leatherworks took a diesel boot apart and found it in the heel area and was puzzled by it, it's just around here. Uh, and Steve seemed to like everything else, but he was really puzzled by that piece of cardboard. Some wise guy saw it and cut and paste the same comment in all my Grantstone reviews, uh, telling me that I'd lied and that the insole was made of paper. Not so, as Steve showed, it's just this bit here. I guess that guy didn't like China. Uh, some keyboard warriors have too much time. Anyway, I banned the idiot. Uh, another update on my original review video is more on how the uh, leather sole in this particular makeup has worn. When I did my original video, the toe tip 
uh, of the leather sole had already worn quite significantly. In a couple of months, they'd worn down in that area by, I think, a half. I had read on social media that other people's leather soles from uh, Grand Stone had done the same, but then it seemed to settle down for them, which mine did. Now, I'm not sure what the physics is. Maybe the soles get used to uh, your walking motion and, and once they wear it off and, and fit to it, accommodate it, and then settle in. Maybe, I don't know. At any rate, they haven't worn much since then. In regard to the leather soles though, I get the feeling on wearing these that these uh, Veg 10 Benz leather soles, sourced from the US by the way, uh, is softer than some of my other leather sole boots like uh, I have a pair of leather sole Grensons from the UK and RM Williams uh, leather soles. Not only do they feel softer but they do get more impressions from loose stones that get pushed into them as you're walking. I'm guessing this is either a function of the leather soles uh, not being tanned as long as those others or that the leather itself is looser in the fibers. There is a trade-off between comfort and wear, but in my less frequent wear case, I'm getting the comfort advantage without having to worry too much, at this stage anyway, about quicker wear. I'm finding that the rubber mitered insert uh, and the heel, I'm finding that a godsend. It saved me a few times from slipping on wet concrete or tiled floors. I find on the whole these uh, leather soles more slippery than some of those others that I'd mentioned. As for the wear and patina on the uppers, they really are quite remarkable. This makeup is in saddle tan, uh, vegetable tan leather. It's from Italian tannery Badalassi Carlo. Initially, it's very firm and in fact, hasn't softened very much at all. It is still pretty stiff and I'm constantly aware of that collar uh, against my ankle. But the plus side is that it is very supportive and once molded to your feet, it's really quite comfortable. I have conditioned this, I think, four times, uh, all of them with Venetian shoe cream, but once in those times, I also applied liquid Neat's Foot oil before I applied the VSC. Uh, reasoning. I took these as my only boot on a three-day business trip to Melbourne. Uh, and if you know Melbourne, you know it rains a lot, and I got these drenched. The Veg Tan leather doesn't like moisture. Uh, in fact, I'll put a photo here of the rain on it only a few days ago. Don't worry, <laughs> the spots dry and disappear. But that time in Melbourne, they got drenched for two of the three days, and I mean drenched. Um, and when I got home and they had dried, I was concerned that they looked like they'd actually kind of um, been leached out. So I put on some liquid Neat's Foot oil very sparingly uh, before I finished it with VSC. Now, over the years, the original orange had darkened anyway to a honey color. Uh, just from wear and exposure to sun and moisture. The Neat's Foot Oil, that was about a year ago, didn't actually darken it, but, uh, but it did change the color of it a bit, more towards a, a brown than a, than a honey uh, color, more like a burnt caramel. I quite like the mature look of this color. The orange was really something to get used to. Uh, the rolls developed like most veg tan leathers. Rolls more than creases, although there are some deep creases. The vamp is looking good, I think but the shaft is actually quite slow to develop rolls as the leather collapses. In fact, this leather uh, hasn't collapsed much over there at all. In terms of QC, it's held up neat, uh, really well, apart from the uh, initial shock of the wear at the tip of the toes. All the brass hardware is firm and doesn't move. Uh, all the stitching on the uppers as well as on the welt and the sole, they've held up well, no breaks or frays. Uh, the full lining inside, has stayed supple and smooth, despite, as I say, the drenching uh, when it did seep through at the toes. Comfort-wise, the uppers have settled in around my feet and the sole construction really has, as they say, molded to the shape of my feet, so they actually feel like custom-made orthotic insoles. I bought these for 370 US dollars, and they are now 395 dollars at the time of recording. In my original video, I said that I thought they were worth uh, up to $100 more that, at the time. Damn it, they heard me. <laughs> I, I still think they're worth it though. Now, Red Wing Iron Rangers are $45 less, but I really don't think you can compare a, a chunky work shoe lasted Iron Ranger to these uh, much more dressier and more intentionally finished boots. I find it hard to match a competitor with this particular design style unless you're talking about, say, Allen Edmonds and Aldens, which respectively sell for about the same price when they're on sale and for much more. 
All in all, I've been happy with these so far, apart from maybe feeling I need to keep an eye on the wear of the sole. I don't really want to put toe taps on them. Uh, I do have to be careful in the wet and I do still feel some pressure where the collar uh, fits against my ankle. But if you have a pair of these, tell me in the comments below how they've gone for you. And don't forget, uh, I hope you click on like and subscribe below. It really does help me out. I have a couple of uh, really interesting boot reviews coming up. I have uh, an economically priced mock toe. I have Australia's mongrel Chelsea boots. Uh, maybe it's a brand you haven't heard of. And I also have a, a rarely seen pair of RM Williams boots coming up. Make sure you subscribe and don't miss them. Until then, take care and see you again soon.